Hey everyone, welcome to this video where we're going to work through a visual approach to the Grossman model. This is credited to Adam Wagstaff's 1986 paper. Let's go. So using pictures is useful for getting intuition of what's going on in any economic model. What Adam Wagstaff did in his 1986 paper, The Demand for Health, a Simplified Grossman Model, was present a framework that focused on the allocative elements of the Grossman model in the short run. This could be thought of as a visual of a static Grossman model, which abstracts from intertemporal elements of the model like depreciation and discount rates. This approach allows for back of the napkin type of analysis of the demand for health in the short run. So we can think about this model as this four quadrant type of thing where each quadrant is called. The first one being our home production where our individual goes and chooses between producing our consumption good and our health status. Um, the second quadrant is our production technology, uh, which we go and we have there, which goes and takes in the health input and produces a health status term. Um, and our third quadrant is our budget constraint here, which goes and indicates that our individual's possibilities where he can go and choose between investing in this health input and consumption of a regular good here. And this fourth quadrant is just going to be a 45 degree line, which we're going to call the helper quadrant. Now, equilibrium in this model is characterized by just really connecting the dots. Um, we have our tangency conditions um, in our first quadrant where the PPF goes and is tangent to our individual's indifference curve there. And that corresponds to a level of production, which is on the production function in our second curve. Um, in our third quadrant, we go and we have our budget constraint and that goes and corresponds to a point on our production function there and a point on our uh, 45 degree line. So we get this nice square here, which indicates uh, the type of equilibrium that we go and we have. We can also think about capacity in the context of this model where we have our capacity limits indicated by this orange line, which goes and shows how much of this health status we can go and produce at its maximum and how much of this consumption good we can go and produce. Now, we're not thinking about production of a consumption good here. Right. So what's being communicated in this quadrant is that we can go and purchase a maximum of all this type of consumption here. And that's going to correspond to this point um, in our first quadrant right there. Now, doing some comparative statics, if we see an income decrease, first going and seeing a shift back in our budget line, um, that's going to have implications for our PPF that we go and have, right? And reducing a level of utility and a lower level of production all in all. Um, so we see, all in all, we see a smaller square that we go and have there. If we think about an increase in health productivity, right? Just a shift upwards, right? In our production function that we go and we have, we go and we see some remarkable results, that being less income being spent on health input but yet a higher level of health status being produced. Um, so really you can go and think about, you know, positive shocks as producing, you know, a larger area square or rectangle and negative shocks producing, you know, a smaller shape there. So this framework is for an alternative approach to the Grossman model, which is important for communicating elements of the model to those who don't have an extensive background in calculus. This way we can have a working model, which we consult for health economic policy changes quickly and that everyone could go and understand with ease. Some of the limitations is that our standard Grossman model, we discuss things like lengths of lifetimes being tied back to the decision environment of the stack model. And we can't discuss changes in qualities, which is possible only in the context of the formal Grossman model. Even so, we having a model which we can present to the uninitiated is important. So we all have to have this model in the back of our head for thinking about comparative statics in the short run. So um, this is our video on the visual approach to the Grossman model or the Econ 101 approach to the Grossman model. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Take care.